I'm incredibly excited to see it uh, finally unveiled. They made a big announcement about it at CES. It got everyone's attention. Uh, the follow-up at Mobile World Congress was really exciting. Uh, however, that was all running on the previous generation tablet, and so it was uh, great to see the, the new phone uh, actually see the light of day and be seen on the, on the live stage. So I know I can't wait to get one in my pocket. They're uh, been wanting to get a Tango tablet since they were first announced in 2014 and been really looking forward to the day that it's just in my smartphone. So Google's Project Tango, now just known as Tango, is a uh, specification for a device that includes both hardware and software. And so the hardware requirements are a color camera, a fisheye uh, infrared camera, and a depth sensor. So these trio of sensors uh, allow the device to know where it is in space at all points in time. So Tango was initiated to allow devices to keep track of themselves in the world just like a human does. So up until now, smartphones have known where they are in, you know, kind of hundred meter increments or so. GPS is good, but it's not that accurate. And so Tango is a way to let devices know where they are in the room down to inches or millimeters. So these three sensors, when put together with the Tango software stack, allow the device to keep track of itself. Yeah, that's, that's a really important distinction to make here. And so if you look at Tango's focus areas, they say that they are, uh, Google says the main focuses of Tango are uh, motion tracking, area learning, and depth perception. So those are not the same thing as 3D scanning. They have similar pieces to one another. Uh, the, the way that they work kind of go hand in hand but an important piece of that that's missing is the actual scanning. So taking an individual depth frame is fine for depth perception that lets you see how far away things are, but to actually take multiple depth frames and put them together to make a full 3D scan is not something that the Tango device is uh, doing out of the box. And so that's what Scandi's software is all about. On the iPad, it's been using Structures Scanner to allow people to do uh, scanning on an iPad and so we're really excited to see this depth sensing technology come into more devices so that our 3D scanning technology can get off just someone's iPad and start finding its way onto your Android smartphone. Absolutely. Uh, I think one he's spot on with the the market is set to, to grow exponentially over the few years. Uh, if you look at all the, the market reports around it, uh, with things like Oculus and, and the Vive and all these different VR headsets, uh, they're predicting just absolutely massive growth over the next few years. And so that's one type of VR and AR. But this uh, new device, the Tengo, is, is focusing more on the AR than the VR side, and it, I think, is going to allow people to actually kind of have the best, the first good interaction with AR. Um, so I think that Tango is well positioned to allow widespread adoption of AR and the example he gave of, um, you know, your GPS being the thing that lets you get from your office to your house or from the hotel to the bar, that that's just kind of faded away and you just know how to get directions from your smartphone now. Well, the same kind of thing is going to be happening in AR. And Microsoft uh, demoed the HoloLens this year and so there's a lot of people getting excited about it and the way that it works its way into everyday life is by using it every day. And so this new form factor, uh, a smartphone, a phablet, is going to allow people to be using this technology every day and that will let developers know what people want to do every day with this new kind of technology. So. I think as a, a white label, like if I'm not representing Scandi as a developer, uh, this is a, a whole new set of tools to work with, things that you probably haven't interacted with before. And so most app developers have found a, you know, a niche in gaming or in taking 
photos or doing uh, social media kind of things. And so there's been a certain toolbox that developers have gotten used to working out of. And so this is going to add massively to that toolbox. If you're a Android developer, you can now do things in AR a lot easier than you ever have before. You'll be able to let the device, uh, let, let the user interact with the world around them in a very uh, easy to use way for a developer. For me personally, as a Scandi developer, uh, I'm just seeing this as widespread 3D scanning, finally actually getting getting a foothold. And so we've uh, we've been really looking forward to this day and uh, can't wait to, to get those devices out there and, and put, put our 3D scanning technology on them. So if you look at the kind of comparables in the market, the uh, structure sensor keep going back to whenever it launched, it was around $400. Uh, I think maybe it was a little bit cheaper through their Kickstarter, but you can buy it now on their site for $350 and they're selling them and that's an attachment. This is a fully baked phone. Uh, I don't know offhand the, the cost of the Vive or Oculus, but they're not free and people are buying them like hotcakes. So uh, if you also look at some of the other um, VR enabling technology is like a 360 camera, like the Ricoh Theta. That's a great deal at $350. So this price point of sub 500, I think is something that people will definitely go out and do. Uh, and if for no other reason, just to see what's going on. And uh, I would imagine a lot of them will be happy that they, they made that. Yeah, so I think, uh, what it means for Scandi is a broader uh, user base is uh, right now the people that are using our iPad app uh, were people that bought a structure scanner and so they know they wanted to do 3D scanning or they know they wanted to do an AR VR um, kind of uh, experience and so that was one subsect of the market it was people that were buying an attachment for an iPad and so that's one type of user and seeing now the type of user that will arise out of an everyday smartphone that's in your pocket and uh, you know what they're gonna be scanning, what they're gonna be capturing every day is something that Scandi is really excited to see what happens if someone can take a scan just as easily as they can take a photo.